This video is intended to be a sort of pre-primer, sort of a dirty, quick primer on entomopathogenic fungi, particularly Bouveribasiana GHA, which is the active agent in Botanigard. I found these videos in my archives. They are of Bamesia tabasi, silverleaf whitefly, which has become glued to the Gerbera leaves that they were infesting. The white substances that you see in the video, in addition to the sort of scaly, waxy filamentation that you might see on the legs and antennae, are Bouveria bassiana hyphae. And what has happened is that the hyphae has become glued to the cuticle, the exoskeleton of the insect. And so what happens here is the fungus will penetrate the cuticle, the exoskeleton, and essentially move from the outside inside forcefully by dissolving the outer layer, the chitinous layer of the exoskeleton. And it'll essentially move in and replicate itself and consume from the inside out the individual specimen. It's sort of a gruesome way to go out, but that's partly why it's so efficacious. A lot of times insects are hygienic. They clean themselves, ants especially. And what will happen is if they don't clean themselves, this. <laughs> that's why they do it. That's one of the reasons anyways. But some insects, like whitefly, they don't really clean themselves in that way. And so what can happen is they'll get infected, just as you're seeing now. There's really no way for these insects to combat the fungus. They will struggle against the hyphae, like you're seeing in this video. Sometimes they ingest spores or hyphal matter, and the ingestion of that biomatter becomes the impetus for an infection. And from the inside out, generally speaking, that's going to be much more of a problem. You can see right here, as the white fly sort of struggles against the hyph hyphae on the back two legs, um, if you rewind the video, you can see that the proboscis has become totally mycosized. The mouth, the stylet, yeah, you can see it here. Um, it's probably not able to feed in that state. It's definitely dying. You can also see sporulation to the south in this particular picture here. That is an example of the Bouveria bassiana sporulating, creating spores which will be carried on the wind or make contact with other insects and the cycle essentially continues. So I'm a huge fan of mycoinsecticides in general. I'm a big fan and proponent of microbial use. Some, I think, work better for preventative than curative, but I'm a huge fan and a big supporter of the Bouveria bassiana species. It infects eight orders of insects, although not all in the same way and even a few mite species too. There's really intriguing research regarding the use of Bouveria bassiana as an endophyte, which is essentially an organism that lives inside of another organism, in this case a plant, endophyte. And in those cases, sometimes certain pests will avoid the plants altogether, or they will become infected when they consume the plant material. And sometimes in addition to that, they will have their rate of herbivory reduced in some capacity. So the mechanisms beside, behind how insect pests can sense the endophyte are not totally understood, at least to me. I'm totally interested in getting more information regarding the subject. But that's about all I have for those videos. I hope you enjoyed this little monologue regarding Bouveria bassiana and some of my sort of quick and dirty primers on entomopathogens in general.
If you have any questions on the topic, feel free to message me or leave a comment in the description in the uh, comment section below. I'll link a few reports regarding Botanigard and perhaps Bouveria Bastiana and other products that use Bouveria Bastiana for people who are interested in the description. And I will also put a couple of videos here at this point in the video that might link to other interesting videos that I have regarding the subject.